So you know, we're talking about Microsoft's latest fabric announcements. And uh, really, these are just a continuation of a journey that you've been on for some time now to unify databases, simplify them, make them more compatible, more open, more modularized, basically more efficient for users. Uh, Arun, what, what do you think the most significant announcement is this time around? We're actually announcing um, you know, three major things. Uh, the first is uh, we announced the uh, the public preview of real-time intelligence uh, in May. Uh, it now becomes generally available. Uh, real-time intelligence makes it incredibly easy for customers to work with uh, all of their data in motion, data coming from IoT devices, logs, telemetry, et cetera, uh, and it's just built into Fabric. So that's, that's number one. Number two is, is perhaps the biggest change to Fabric since we introduced it, uh, which is we're uh, adding uh, transactional operational databases into Fabric natively. And we're starting with uh, our flagship database, which is Azure SQL. Uh, and with, uh, you know, with uh, the addition of operational databases, Fabric moves from being an analytics and real-time platform into a complete data platform uh, for customers. And the third thing is there's a whole bunch of enhan uh, enhancements to Fabric. Perhaps the most important one is uh, we're announcing the addition of the One Lake catalog, uh, which really uh, allows customers to govern the data in Fabric, but also connect it to the business users. Can you walk me through what you're doing to help business leaders prepare their data to be able to leverage these these agents, which is kind of all the rage right now, all the top among enterprise for 2025? No, absolutely. Um, you know, we all know that uh, you know uh, any AI model, you know uh, agents, but also any any AI model, LLM models, all all of your AI is only as good as the data that it gets to work on. So we've tried to make it very easy for customers with Microsoft Fabric to get their data ready for AI. Uh, and getting it ready for AI is really, really hard and complicated uh, because we know that in real life for enterprise customers, data is very messy. You know, it's everywhere. It's on premises. It's at pretty much, you know, many different clouds, not just a single cloud. Um, it comes from many different sources, whether they're transactional databases, SaaS applications, IoT devices, data lakes, application telemetry. And when I talk to business leaders, some of the things that are top of mind for them uh, are time to value, right? Um, because things are moving very, very quickly and they're not slowing down. You know, uh, Cosmos DB is our NoSQL document database. Uh, it is quickly becoming the database of choice for the world's AI workloads. Uh, whether you're building, sh you know, a uh, shopping cart or a shopping assistant, uh, you need to respond very quickly to a large user base in, in real time. And uh, it also means that uh, often the AI capabilities just need to be built into the database itself. Um, so in Cosmos DB, for example, vector search, you know, as, as you and I both know, vector search makes it easy for information retrieval using semantic meaning versus, you know, exact predicates. Uh, so you can say, hey, show me something like this book or, you know, some, this thing that I'm interested in. Um, and, you know, you don't have the time to extract the data out, go run your, you know, uh, rag model somewhere else. It has to be just built into the database itself. Um, so we are seeing some of these patterns really play themselves out. Uh, and, you know, one great example that you and I know well is, is ChatGPT itself. It's the fastest growing consumer product in history. And it uses Cosmos DB to, pro, you know, to power all of the chat conversation history, its context, its memory, uh, which means there's, you know, many, many, many billions of transactions every single day just keeping up with the growth of ChatGPT. So you've clearly got an advantage uh, in terms of your, the models you're offering, right? There's the relationship with OpenAI. When it comes to the, the data side, the fabric side, how do you see this differentiated? I mean, you, you talked about Cosmos DB and the integration with vector search and, um, and RAG. Is, it, is, is that differentiated from what the other players, let's face it, AWS and Google, right? At Google Cloud are the two big competitors on the, on the data side. Um, you also have Snowflake and Databricks to some extent. How differentiated is, is, is what you have here? Yeah, it is highly differentiated, Matt. And let me just uh, break it down. With Ignite, we're bringing operational databases in as well. So delivering a full data platform as an end-to-end -end SaaS uh, stack available as a SaaS service uh, is really, really exciting for customers, number one. Number two is that, um, you know, if you look into Fabric, we have unified the business model, which means that, uh, you know, customers don't need to, uh, you know, uh, spin lots of different meters, uh, and then have lots of isolated pools of compute that are purely util utilized. Uh, in Fabric, all compute is virtualized, all compute is serverless. So customers literally just buy one thing, Fabric capacity. The third big area that's highly differentiated is really uh, Fabric embracing the idea that data lives everywhere. Um, so with uh, OneLake, we provide shortcuts to 
you know, not just to Azure, to on-premises, to AWS, to GCP. Uh, with real-time intelligence, uh, we not only support you know, Azure Event Hub and Event Grid and IoT Hub, but we support AWS Kinesis and Google, Google PubSub and Kafka, you know, Confluent Kafka, whatever it runs. So really being able to work with data everywhere without having to first migrate into Azure is a huge win for customers. But then you take the fact that Fabric is um, built into all of the products that uh, are Microsoft 365, right? The, the, uh, the products that business users use every single day. Um, products like, uh, you know, Power BI, Excel, Teams. Um, and now with the Microsoft 365 Copilot and Copilot Studio, um, you know, but because eventually business users need to get value out of the data. You know, I understand you're bringing together transactional and analytical workflows in a unified data platform. Can you talk about why that matters, maybe with a look to AI as well? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, what we're seeing is every application is an AI application today, you know, and a lot of the boundaries uh, previously between, you know, uh, tra transactional databases, analytics databases, in-memory databases, real-time databases, vector databases, et cetera, are blurring very, very rapidly, Matt. You know, uh, and most often customers use these things in conjunction, so which is why, you know, Fabric has been so exciting. And with bringing operational, transactional operational databases together uh, into Fabric, uh, we're really dramatically expanding what customers can do. Because no longer do your worlds of analytics and AI and BI and transactions uh, need to be separate. Like they are all integrated into the same product. All of the data lives in one lake. All of the data is sitting in open source data format. So it's a huge step forward, especially as people are looking at for the transition to the of AI. You know, in, in retrospect, right, when you're thinking, talking about it, it seems so obvious, right? It, so so I, guess, I guess the question is, why did it take so long? Uh, what was so difficult around the transactional uh, workloads to, to actually bring this to, to, uh, to, to a unified platform? Uh, a lot of this engineering has not been trivial, you know. Um, and, you know, in, in the case of Microsoft, we had some advantages to start off with. Because in all of these markets, operational databases, business intelligence, data integration, we have decades of innovation uh, to bring to bear, you know. And all of these products are built in-house at Microsoft. They're not simply an acquired collection of products, which means that we can do a lot of the hard work to, you know, because they, they share a lot of the same foundations. So one is we had, a, uh, you know, uh, we had a running start, right, number one. Number two is um, we, it took a lot of effort to move all of them from a disparate set of past services, platform as a service, to move them to software as a service, you know? And the distinction between PaaS and SaaS is, is pretty stark. It's almost like I go to the car dealership and if it's PaaS, I'm getting a bunch of parts and I have to build a car, you know, myself. If it's SaaS, you know, I pick the color, I pick the engine, you know, I pick a couple of other things and I'm out driving, right? So the move to SaaS was very, very substantial. The third is, uh, you know, embracing open source data formats at the heart of Fabric is, is not trivial because we have to deliver industry-leading performance across all of our engines on open source data formats, uh, which took us years of engineering to get, get right. And the last thing is really unifying the business model itself because to unify the business model, all compute needs to be virtualized. All compute needs to be serverless. We need to bring them together in a way in which it makes sense for customers. You mentioned uh, some of the other exciting announcements. Uh, you, one of the ones you mentioned was the One Lake catalog. There, there's also a you know, slew of other things like AI functions. You know, what, what are you most excited about? So let me start with AI skills. What AI skills let you do is you have no data sitting in fabric. It could come from anywhere. It could come from any cloud. It could be structured. It could be unstructured. Uh, it could be semi-structured. What AI skills help you do is really very quickly build an agent that can interrogate the data, can analyze the data, and respond to questions in natural language, right? So you just literally pick the tables that you wanted to work with, um, and uh, you know, you basically, you're basically you're good to go. And what it would do is it'll uh, use, uh, you can ask questions in natural language, and it might you know, ask questions um, uh, to your lake house using SQL. Uh, it might interrogate your real-time data uh, using uh, a real-time uh, uh, intelligence engine. It might uh, query your semantic model in Power BI based on your business definitions. It'll combine these answers together in intelligent ways and allow you to, you know, query that either you, you, through natural language or, uh, or connect to it from Copilot Studio, where you're building an agent that needs to be able to query the data that is sitting, uh, you know, in the data layer. Um, so it really makes it dramatically easier for you to work with your data and 
you know, and uh, access it through natural language, and it connects in with, uh, you know, with uh, Copilot Studio. It links in with Azure AI Studio, or you can just use our REST endpoint to query it from any application uh, where you want to integrate uh, NL capabilities to be able to integrate data. So I would, if I were to pick one, I would pick AI skills. So with with customers using potentially thousands of models now, I mean, you, you've you've opened up Copilot to to allow users to use any of these eighteen hundred different models in the catalog. Um, how do you anticipate that affecting their data needs? Uh, you know, how are they training these models using data and so on? Uh, what we were doing is making sure that the, the fabric on one leg is just built into all of the AI uh, products from Microsoft. So if you're using Azure AI Studio, um, you know, uh, if you're using any of the models there, we recommend, and you need to access data, we recommend that customers get their data organized in Fabric. And then one lake is just natively built into Azure AI Studio. So you can, you know, get your data ready. It could be across clouds. You could do a lot of transformations, get it to the quality that you want it to be. And then you can integrate it with the models. You can integrate it based upon the uh, Azure AI Studio. And these things are just built in. So we do see these things as uh, two sides of the same coin. Uh, do your data work in Fabric? Do your AI work in Azure AI Studio or Copilot? Pilot Studio, for that matter, and these products just work hand in glove. Wow! So you've got this open, you know, one lake. You've got these transactional databases. So you've got this this database unified platform. Is this the end of history? We want like what else do you need to do to make fabric databases more open? Give us a sense of what's going to come next. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, you know, uh, one of the things that has been exciting for customers is really the openness of Fabric, right? So everything from the data sitting in at one leak. So we wanted to make sure that Fabric itself is completely open. Uh, we also talked about the fact that the metadata is open, built in cataloging, lineage, et cetera. So all of that works. Um, so, uh, you know, in terms of the future, one of the things that, uh, you know, we're really focused on is making sure that the pace of innovation with Fabric continues very, you know, um, uh, very, very quickly. We have a ton of work to do, Matt. And, uh, and I think a lot of it just comes from learning, right? Because, uh, you know, a lot of these patterns are new. Uh, some of these patterns will work, some of them will not work. And uh, we'll only know as customers try them and try them at scale, you know, the way it's used in automotive may be very, very different from the way it's used in healthcare. You know, regulations have a, a role to play. Governments have, uh, you know, a say in how the technology should be used. So I, I do think that we as Microsoft, we as the Azure Data Team, we as the industry at large are going to th go through a lot of learning uh, uh, in the coming years. And our products are going to have to evolve very, very rapidly to keep up with, uh, with all of the learning that we will get. Yeah, I'm, su I'm sure you will. I'm really looking forward to staying in touch uh, on, on the journey. Right, Agents are coming around the corner for, for next year. I'm sure we'll, we'll touch base on what those next steps are for you, Arun, at the Fabric Team. So congratulations on everything you've done. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. It was great talking to you.